It's no secret that I've always been a fan of the supernatural. I've always watched supernatural-themed shows, movies, and documentaries. I know that some of you may think it's all fiction, but trust me, what happened to me the last time I went to the movies scared me for the rest of my life, literally. It happened about three months ago. Me and Mandy, my best friend, were kind of out of options as to what to do on the weekend. The weather wasn't exactly on our side either. It was raining and the clouded sky made us want to sleep all day. So how about we go to a movie? She asked me as I was sitting on the living room chair scrolling on my phone. Hey, Beth, did you hear me? She continued. Yeah, yeah, sorry, I was just reading something. A movie? Sure. What movies are playing at the theater today? Well, tell you what, let's go there and buy a ticket to the earliest screening so it can be a surprise to both of us, she told me. I like the idea. That way, we wouldn't have to find reasons as to why we shouldn't watch this movie or that movie. Whichever started first, that's the one we were going to see. All set and done, we grabbed our jackets and ran to the car so that we wouldn't be exactly soaking wet when we got there. Fortunately, on the way to the movie theater, the rain stopped. How lucky are we? I said while my friend was behind the wheel. As we got there and parked the car, we noticed that the place looked almost deserted. We went inside and at the ticket booth, we didn't see anyone. I started looking around and so did my friend. Can I help you? A voice startled us. We looked around but couldn't find the person that spoke to us. Over here, she continued. We shifted our attention towards the ticket booth and this time there was someone there, an old lady. She was very short, with gray hair and thick glasses. It seemed like she was over 80. What can I do for you girls? Hello, we'd want two tickets to the next movie that's going to play, my friend said. The woman gave us the tickets, along with half a smile, and off we went to theater number three. As we walked through the hallway, strangely, the place looked creepy. Some of the light bulbs were busted, and it was quite dark. I hope this turns out to be a hell of a movie, I told Mandy. Finally, there we were, in front of Theater 3. As we stood in the doorway, we couldn't see anyone. Are you freaking kidding me, Beth? We got the entire place to ourselves! Mandy yelled as she ran by the seats. Woohoo! Stop it! What if someone hears you? I said, a little bit embarrassed. But it was cool, though. We took any seat we wanted, and as soon as we did, the door slammed shut. It was pitch dark in there. A couple of commercials and movie trailers, nothing spectacular. But we still didn't know what movie we were going to see. We didn't check the title on the ticket, so we were surprised. The movie started with a girl who managed to escape from a basement. It was nighttime, and she was running away from that area. Kinda cliche until now, Mandy commented while I agreed. I'm not going to tell you what happened next because it was not that eventful. Basically, it was a horror or crime movie, nothing special. After about an hour and a half, well, that's when things took a wrong turn. As we watched the movie, something strange appeared on the screen. It seemed like blood was spilling down from the top two corners. That is weird, right? I said. It seemed like those special effects were not following the theme of the movie. After about a couple of minutes, Mandy got up from her seat and started walking towards the screen. She told me that something seemed off. The blood that was dripping down looked way too realistic. She reached out her hand and touched the screen. I was patiently waiting for her to tell me something, but she remained with her back towards me and did not say a word. It looked like she was frozen. I got up from my seat and walked towards her. She looked at me and showed me her right hand. A drop of blood fell on my shoe. Both of us started to scream. The blood was real. Soon, half of the screen was covered in it. It started to leak onto the floor. We made a run for it, heading towards the exit. To our surprise, the door was locked. We started banging on it, screaming at the top of our lungs. Let us out! Unlock this door right now! As we were trying to escape, the movie stopped. The screen went black, a 
And since that was the only source of light inside the theater, we couldn't see anything. We took out our phones and turned on the flashlight. The blood was continuing to drip, and at that point, it reached the front seats. As we were looking around for a way out, we started hearing whispers. Those whispers quickly turned into screams. Help! Please! I have a family! You cannot do this! The screams seemed so real. It was like the people were there with us. All of a sudden, we noticed someone in one of the seats. I ran towards the person holding my flashlight in front of me, but as I reached the seat, I noticed that he was dead. It was a man who was shot in the head, blood gushing on his face. I looked at Mandy. She was petrified. Look, there's a dead woman in the corner. I looked in that direction and where she was. A woman was lying on the floor, having multiple shot wounds all across her body. The voices became louder and louder, and we were banging on the door until our knuckles bled. Finally, I don't know how, but it opened. We ran away and quickly hopped into our car. From there, we called the cops. As they arrived, we told them about the people in the theater. Are you trying to play a prank on us? What do you mean you went to see a movie? That theater has been out of operation for a year now. A massive shooting took place there and five people were killed. We were shocked. When we got home, we researched what he said. And he was right. Everything he told us was true. We could never come to terms with what had happened that day. Did we see the ghosts of the people who lost their lives there? And who was that old woman? Too scared to subscribe? <laughs> I clutched my popcorn in one hand and my large smoothie in another as I made my way into the movie theater. I had been waiting for this movie to come out for a long time now. I didn't care that I had no one to watch with. Most people here came in pairs or in groups. Well, except for me. I recently moved into my new dorm at college where I was studying engineering. My parents promised to check up on me once in a while. I was the last child and I knew that they missed me terribly. My older sister is married now and lives in New Orleans. I hadn't made any friends in school yet and I doubted that it would change soon. I sat in the middle row which in my opinion was the best place to sit. I wouldn't have to crane my head to see the screen and I wouldn't be distracted by a lot of people in front of me. I munched on my popcorn as I patiently waited for the movie to start. Halfway into the movie, I noticed something strange about the couple sitting in front of me. The girl was leaning away from the guy but was trying not to be too obvious about it. At that moment, the guy put his arm around her shoulders and I watched her cringe. The guy noticed it too and dug his fingernails into her bare shoulder. I decided to look away since it was none of my business and tried to concentrate on the movie. I didn't want to miss out on anything. When the movie was over, I sighed in bliss and waited for the credits to start rolling. I always watched movies right to the very end and it was only appropriate that I honored this movie by doing the same thing. Everyone else left me in the theater, including the couple in front of me. A part of me wanted to go and help the girl, but I didn't want to get into any trouble. My mom once said I would one day stick my nose in someone else's business and it wouldn't end well for me. I glanced at my wristwatch and saw that it was a little after 8. There were not a lot of people in the theater anymore and it was mostly just the workers. I passed by the ticket stand and something caught my eye. The door behind it was slightly open, and I could have sworn that I just heard someone scream. I frowned, wondering why there was nobody at the ticket stand. I tiptoed to the door and peeked inside. I decided to walk in and make sure everything was alright. I walked further in and heard footsteps coming towards me. It sounded like someone was running. The girl that sat in front of me with her boyfriend ran towards me. I couldn't give her a warning before she crashed into me. She had been looking backwards. We both fell to the floor, her scream piercing through my ears. I held her upper arms and asked her what was wrong. Her mascara was smudged and there were tear tracks in her face. Her lips were trembling as she stuttered. C -c -c call 
the police. He, he killed him. My confusion grew and I watched as she jumped back to her feet and ran out. I ran after her, not wanting to find out whatever made her that scared. I dug my phone out so I could call the cops. I saw the girl at the elevator doors pressing buttons frantically. The doors refused to open. Before I could ask her to calm down, there was a voice behind me. Why are you running from me? I saved you. I swiveled to see one of the workers staring at the girl. He walked past me to where the girl was. She was sobbing with her hands over her mouth. I got furious. Even though I didn't know the whole story, it was obvious she didn't want to be with him. I held her phone up, my thumb poised over the call button. Leave her alone or I'll call the cops, I yelled. The guy turned towards me and was upon me so fast that I didn't have a chance to react. My phone got knocked out of my hands and I crashed to the floor. She was with a monster and I got rid of him, he yelled and stepped on my hand. I screamed in pain and begged him to stop. He did and immediately went back to where the girl was sobbing on the floor. He patted her back and she shuffled away from him, fear evident in her eyes. I grabbed one of the vases used to decorate the place and smashed it on his head. He stumbled and almost fell on the girl, but she moved away quickly. He grabbed my hand, but I noticed that his grip was weak. I screamed as I pushed him away. I grabbed the girl's hand and dragged her to the stairs. We started descending really fast, practically flying down the stairs. He wasn't far behind us, but I knew that once we reached where people were, we would be safe. As we burst into the ground floor, two cops barged into the room with their guns drawn. We ran to the cops and fell over our words as we tried to explain what was going on. They took action fast and went upstairs. They later came back down, saying that he had somehow escaped, but they would do their best to find him. They also asked if we knew anything about the dead body that was in one of the rooms upstairs. The girl broke down in tears and explained that the worker had killed him, saying that men should learn to respect ladies. Olivia, the girl said, sniffing. My name is Olivia. We were huddled at the back of an ambulance van wrapped in blankets. Apparently, one of the workers downstairs was the one who called the cops after hearing strange screams from the floor above. Tess, I replied, shivering a little. The events of the night still felt a bit surreal to me. I went from going to watch a movie to almost getting myself killed. Olivia and I talked for a while and it was probably because we were both still shaken up by what happened. The cops questioned us and ensured we were all right before offering to drop us off at our homes. Olivia and I stayed in contact after that and I found out that her dead boyfriend used to abuse her a lot. They had been together for a couple of months and she showed me bruises from when he had hit her. In a way, I was glad that he was no longer in her life, even if it meant that he died horribly. She told me that the worker told him that he wanted to show him something cool and took him into a room where he proceeded to strangle her boyfriend. It was obvious she was still traumatized by everything and I promised to be there for her, glad I had made a friend.